Saria here, Chief Green Alchemist at Going to Natural. Do you know it takes less than 30 seconds for your skin products to enter your bloodstream? Yeah, so knowing what's in them, super important. We know you want what's best for you and your family. And here at Going to Natural, so do we. We care about the environment, we care about the animals, and most importantly, we care about you. We offer free support for your healthy journey and love providing affordable, all-natural products that are responsibly sourced, cruelty-free, luxurious, and always made with love. We're not just a shop, we're a community, and we'd love to have you. Browse our collection of plant-based skincare products and natural tips and tricks at shop.goingtonatural.com. That's shop.going, the number two, natural.com. A conscious brand for a conscious community. Use code LOVEEARTH for 15% off your first order. Welcome to Cherry's World. Today in Cherry's World, we got a legend in the house, y'all. Mr. Cedric Sabalas is here. Not only is he an NBA legend, but he is now the vice president of the Mavericks. And he is a very highly successful business owner. Without further ado, let's give it up for Mr. Cedric Sabalas. Would you like to advertise on Cherry's World and have your product placed on Cherry's social media for the world to see? Email us now at cherriesworldpodcast at gmail.com for low introductory rates. Cherry's World Podcast. Get heard. Welcome to Cherry's World. I have to say welcome to Cherry's World. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a legend in the house. Straight legend. Is somebody behind me? Is somebody behind me? The jersey's in the back to tell it all. Mr. Cedric (laughs) Savalas is here in Cherry's World. That's fun. What's good? How y'all doing? Y'all good? We good. Yes, sir. Hey, man. Tell me where we all are in the world because you know, videos and everything, but, uh, you know, I hope you're safe wherever you guys are. We have covered every coast. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, hey, how you feel about LeBron James wearing your jersey, man? Is that disrespectful or what? (laughs) Not, no disrespect at all. You know, it's real funny when every time I see him, he he, kind of goes, I'm cool, I'm cool. Like, like, (laughs) but my thing is this, like, everybody was like, yo, did he get permission and I had posted it up uh, when he had got the jersey. Like, no, you don't. You don't have to get. It's not like my jersey is in the rafters. I mean, it's right here, but that, that's just at the house. It ain't in the rafters, in the form. It's not in the rafters, the Staples Center. So you don't need my permission to get my, to be wearing my jersey. You know, he didn't have to talk to Stu Lance. Stu Lance wore number twenty three too. So I, you know, I figured. Mitch Richmond did too. Mitch, well, that you know, that doesn't count. I mean, Rich did all his work in <laughs> Sacramento. He did all his work in Golden State. You know what I'm saying? You know. That's right. Okay, I'm going to let y'all talk basketball, okay? Come on, my fault, yeah. it's, okay, it's okay. I know people usually like to start and carry the journey out, but I'm like Quentin Tarantino. You know what I'm saying? The past is great, mm-hmm. but Seth got a lot of stuff going on right now, and I need to know about it. <laughs> now, Cedric... We had a conversation. I'll be watching your Instagram. I'll be watching your Twitter. Now, I know that you came back to Dallas where you already had a relationship because you played. And I don't want to say it wrong because, excuse me, y'all know basketball ain't my thing. I'm a football girl. You came back as an analyst or commentator? Both. I came back as an analyst. Uh, I I did some part-time commentating, but I came back as an analyst. And uh, that was uh, three years ago. And um, and then last year, I was hired as vice president, uh, one of the vice presidents of the Dallas Mavericks. So it's it's been a whirlwind. It's been a good ride to coming back. back. I wouldn't say home, but uh, home. back to a place where I originally played. That's your home. Could you come back as vice president? Like, how does that feel? It's crazy. You know, like when, when uh, Sid Marshall, she's our CEO, um, you know, th- this is how the story happened. I... I I used to play there, so 
uh, I knew I was going to have to be there year round doing my analyst job with Fox Sports Southwest. So I, I went to the community relations girls. They're about 20, 25 years old. I said, hey, I used to play here. If you guys need me for any community work, you no know, problem. Absolutely free. I'm there. I'm, I'm all for trying to uplift people and, and trying to help as much as possible. And they gave me a look like, who is this cat right here? And I was like, all right. I knew I knew that look, so I just walked back out the office. Like they, they like, who is this guy? I don't even know who he is, or I don't know if they had to Google me or whatever, whatever. But that conversation got back to St. Marshall, and uh, about two months later, she pulls me aside and says, "Hey, I need to talk to you." And I'm like, "Uh oh, well, I hope I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing I wasn't supposed to be doing." So I came in the office, and she offered me that position, and and, and I was like, "All right, I'm getting punk right now, right? Like, uh, like what's going on, like?" You know, because I didn't apply for the position, nor was I, was I uh, eager to go get that position in the front office. I, it was just, you know, it's funny. It, it, I'm, I'm, a, I wouldn't say I'm a super religious guy. I'm not a super Christian, but I, I just feel like when you do good things, God will take care of you. And uh, I have been walking a, a wonderful path for so many years and doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, and a lot of people, after I got the job, was like, "Yo." That's crazy. How'd you get that job? Blah, 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 blah. Woo, woo. And I said, you know, if you look at all my social medias, I don't be posting crazy stuff. I don't be liking, no. you know, butt cheeks and all that other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't I don't get down like that. And that's why, you know, it was easy when that position opened to, to go ahead and let me fall right into that place because he placed me there because I've been doing good things and doing, you know, applying myself correctly. You know, people sit at home in the middle of the night and they start pressing buttons and and commenting on this and doing that, but they don't realize, you know, the corporate world, people are watching that. They pay attention to that and they see what you like and they see what you comment on and they see what you post and they put that in their mental Rolodex. And sometimes that could be, you know, a burden to you because that ha has happened before with the Washington Redskins. It has happened before with a lot of other organizations about, you know, they having decisions on posting this or, or they, they don't agree with the moves that they're made. And, and it's kind of tough like that. But I, I, personally just kind of walked the right path and, and God kind of just took care of me. I love that. Um, I'm one of those people who is like, like in butts in the middle of the night and like in <laughs> boots, you know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> that explains where I'm, where I'm at, where I'm at right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Man. That's you, funny. You, I need you. you just totally schooled me. So your position right now, are you going to be doing any analyst stuff or any commentating stuff this year? Or are you just going to concentrate on being one of the vice presidents of the Mavericks? No, nah, no. Nah. You know, God gave me a big mouth. And, and so I'm still going to be able to use that. And that was one of the great things about that. Uh, the job position that sent offered me. She, she allowed me to continue to do what I wanted to do, my passion. I love basketball. I love uh, of sports. I, I got this gift to gab, the way to communicate, uh, because as a as a young kid in South Central, uh, me and my little knucklehead, well, he's an older brother, but we, you know, that Atari game that came out, when we y'all probably too young for that. I mean, you know, y'all might not know about it, but my mom was like, don't hook it up to the big TV, that big floor model. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. We hooked we hooked it up, hooked it up wrong, blew the tube out, and all you can hear was the the sound coming out the television. So I got to listen to the Brady Bunch, I got to listen to the Jeffersons, I got to listen to all these shows, and you got to use your imagination. That's why I'm, you know I'm a pretty good storyteller. So that's why I, I'm I am what I am with this Big Mouth. Wow. So Mr. Big Mouth, are you still DJing? Because a lot of people don't know. Said be traveling. Said be in Africa. He be in the Bahamas. Look, I stay, I stay on my computer. I stay DJing. It's just, it's just a part of me. It's, uh, it's what I grew up on. It was my first love. Uh, I, I fell into this basketball thing just by, again, being in the right place at the right time. But I wanted to be a DJ. I fell in love uh, when B Street came out. And uh, the first song that, that really took me over the top and, and made me fall in love with hip hop was uh, African Bravado's Planet Rock. Soul Sonic Force, I was I was mesmerized. That in, 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 that just took me. I was all the way upstairs. If y'all know in South Central LA, we got apartments. So I was upstairs in my apartment, windows open, because we don't need AC in, in, in Cali. We don't need no air conditioning. You know, we let the breeze through. And and a, a gentleman who was in New York City, uh, he works in New York City during the winter, he brought that album, that uh twelve inch home, and was playing it one summer after morning. 
I went down there with my half cut pajamas on, no shirt on, no shoes, no socks, and was like, sir, what is that that you're playing? And he's like, you think that's hope? He flipped it on the other side in the party, people, and I just lost my mind. That's when I fell in love with hip hop. And and from there, B Street and watching TV and um, scrambling up every dollar I could to buy records, to buy turntables, to buy anything that I could that had to do with DJ. So that's what I wanted to do. And, and I'm always going to do that. So you hear that? You guys better hire said to DJ, but before basketball <laughs> season, because once basketball season starts, he going to have to hang I'm it up. For I'm, I'm still good. I, 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 you know, I can still hook you up. Anybody want to get down? I'm good. Really? Man, that's, that's what a real one really is that right there, there man. That yeah. DJ. And I keep, you have a DJ I keep trying Vegas? to, yeah, all the time. I, I keep trying to get this, this whole celebrity battle thing going, but everybody kind of scared of me, like Big Shaq and, and uh, yeah. Eddie George and Marcellus Wiley, all those guys DJ. But I'm like, yo, let's let's all get together one time and just have a battle. And they like, nah, 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 say, I, I don't want to get down with you like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, right, you know, it, it is what it is. He's calling names. He's calling I, I, names. I, I, I call them out. I call them out. And my thing is this, my thing is this. When it comes to celebrity DJing, I don't think, I, I, I haven't heard Questlove DJ yet, but I know he's got a mad repertoire of, of music in his mind. I've heard Biz Markey. I heard uh, Q-Tip. For those that that are that made success in another profession and started DJing, well, I started DJing first, but you know the opposite way. But I, I think there's nobody I can touch these hands. I I think there's nobody <laughs> that can touch these hands that had success in another profession and then are DJing. So anybody out there that want to holla at me, Questlove, Q-Tip, Shaq. Anybody, holla at me. Let's go turntable for turntable and see what happens. We, we might have to host this. Cherry's World might have to host this. I got hundred dollars side bets. <laughs> I'm ready. I, I got a hundred on Sarah right now. You better make me my money, Sarah. <laughs> go back to the block with the hundred dollar side bet. Hey, do you do you think they really be DJing or do you think they be coming in with the premix stuff? The premix stuff already. It's a lot of premixes. I, you know, and I don't do that. If y'all want to jump on SoundCloud and check out all my mixes, go ahead and do that. Uh, I, I don't do the pre-mixes stuff, the whole hype and uh, that old stuff. I, all my stuff is real raw. And uh, sometimes it's like that, you know. And I, I get the performance sometimes. I, you you got to perform that way. But I don't like that, you know. I'm, that, that's not, I'm not down to other DJs that do that at all. I just, I'm, that's just not my way. That's not the way I grew up on. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a crate carrier. That's how long I've been DJing. I started when I was 12. I used to carry crates. So... Those that have never carried crates, please don't step up. Those that have never carried a crate, <laughs> do not step up and try to see these hands because you, you, your hands ain't work. You ain't worked enough to get these hands. Yet. Now, talking about SoundCloud, it is Leo season. One of my favorite Leos just celebrated his fiftieth birthday. Happy right, belated! Right. And for his Thank birthday, you very much. Oh. he's giving away mixes. <laughs> oh. Happy birthday, bro! Yeah, I appreciate it, Corey. Yeah, I, I do that every year. Uh, I usually get mixes all around the year, but I always do a birthday mix because people always hit me, you know, thank you, a happy birthday, and I hit them back like, thank you, and here go a little party music. People hang out, you know, with me just a little bit. So it, it's one of the things that I do every year. I'm going to try to continue to do it as long as I live. When we were outside, I was with the kids, and we was outside partying, said, you DJed in the backyard boogie over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's sweet. That's, see, that's why I wanted to do it, so you can all... Party all over the world. I love this internet thing. Now I see you know Corey. What? I know you want to talk no. basketball. I know. No, 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 no. no. I want to talk about the DJ because uh, you you sent me um, uh, one of his mixes I think two weeks ago, and it was a slow jam, yeah. slow jam, slow jam. Yeah, yeah. That I go everywhere. everywhere. I go everywhere. I I don't I don't stop. You know, I, that's one thing like that really pulls me out of clubs. One thing I don't drink. Do all that other crazy stuff, so it's kind of hard for DJs not to have a shot with the promoter, not to have a bottle of champagne with the owner and stuff. I don't really do that, so you know, most of the time I don't usually get those gigs. And plus, you know, I don't want to be up till two, three in the morning. But uh, my my genre of music will go everywhere. I mean, I go from rock, soft rock to slow jams to I'll just blend it all in and try to get you know the new, the old, mix it in whatever I could do because it's just. Yeah, I love music. I mean, I'm, I love yeah, music. Like, I love, like, I love it so much that I think, like, other than missing my family, 
I, I, I hope and pray when I leave this earth that I can take some sort of music with me. Wherever I'm going to go, I, I, I just hope I can take some sort of music with me. I, and I know I can't grab this laptop and, you know, hold it and take it with me, but that 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 sound, that music, it, it's just lovely, and uh, I love it. I've been loving it since I was a little kid. I got it from my mom and my grandmother and my aunts and, uh, from them partying, and from ever since then, I've just been in love with music. That's so awesome. Uh, now, not to change the subject, but real quick before I let Courtney get the basketball, because he's, he's been waiting <laughs> on you all day. Okay, I want to talk about these new companies. For okay. his 50th birthday, he's going to start some new companies, and one is called GWIC, and I actually got the app on my phone. Yeah, yeah. And it's the GWIC app, and um, the GWIC app is the first, it's the first social media gift carding app. Everybody has either given gift cards or received gift cards. And I have 15 of them in the drawer right now that I forget about all the time. Yeah. So this is an opportunity to have it right there on your phone. You can also add some social media content to it. So you can go, hey, Courtney, what's up, bro? I know you're going to the Laker game. Here goes 50 bucks to go to get you some beers up in the Laker stadium or whatever, whatever. And uh, you can send that video to them and it makes it you know a little bit fun. And not only that, when you get to Nike or you get to Foot Locker or you get to uh, Chipotle and you don't have to worry about those cards in your drawer because they're in your phone. You could just scan it right there on your phone and, and never have to worry about it. And also, you can re-gift it. So if, if Courtney ain't a big Laker fan, he can send that stuff over to Jerry and Jerry <laughs> can send it over, you know, so you can re-gift all that stuff and make a little fun thing about it. Hey, this is dope. I'm looking at it right now. This is dope. It's yeah, awesome because I'm the queen of leaving stuff in my drawer. And getting yeah. in Target and being like, wait, I know I had $75. Yes. And the fact yes. that I can just, but I don't leave my phone. Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. So I'm really excited about that one. And the other one is skin. You started a skincare company for damaged skin. Will it get rid of the zit I got right here, sir? It, it will. It will help all that. We have all, all corner line, all the NB, uh, line as as put ourselves in a situation where and that's funny because they came to me and i you know and i'm i'm not a guy who you know the, the facials and all that stuff i mean i take care of my feet and everything but other than that i don't i don't get into the oils i hadn't gotten into that and they just was like wait this dude's about 50 years old skin clean you know let, let, let's try to reach out to him and i said okay we're gonna do this uh, we we gonna have to do it for our skin and everybody's skin because you know obviously we don't dominate the cosmetic market but uh, we need to make sure our skin is taken care of because our skin is a little bit different than other skin. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So uh, they was more than happy to do the research and did that. Uh, and also for us, men court, it's not like a situation where we're looking real feminine and, and, yeah. and you know, getting our diva on, nothing like that. It's really taking care of it, really cleaning it, really cleansing it, uh, regrowthing it. Um, like you said, Jerry, you trying to take care of those sets, those things, yeah. situations like that. Because, uh, you know, especially in our community, we don't really... Uh, the way we wash our face, the way we grow up washing our face is a little bit different than everybody else's. So, uh, and, 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 and the way we tolerate sun and, and outside and cold conditions, and, you know, so everybody always got some Vaseline, some chest That's somewhere, right. somehow. And, and we wanted to, we want, I wanted to make sure that this was taken care of all skins too. And I mean, I'm almost mid forties and I have like adult acne and a lot of mine is brought on from makeup. And that happens to me by work hazard is wearing makeup. So I don't know how you chicks is doing it, but you need to go out and get you some <laughs> nourishingbotanicals.com and find yes. out what Mr. Cedric Sabala's got for your face. I'm going to try yes, these nourishing, too. Nourishingbotanicals.com and go check it out. And, and uh, I'll tell you, especially you talking about the women with the makeup. Yes. The, the, the difficult thing is like either they, they didn't went out and had a good time, maybe a little tipsy and they get lazy and like sleepy, like, oh, I don't want to take this off. This, as soon as they jump in the shower before they go to bed, they can apply it, get all that makeup off, get it all out the way, and then go to bed really cleanse and have that clean face. And not and not worry about waking up in the morning and next to you, somebody like, who is this? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's still going to keep it's gonna keep you nice and bright. <laughs> Man, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. A lot of people need that, too, for real. Yeah. 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 Uh, what's it like working with Mark Cuban? And does he have any stock tips? You know what I'm saying? I'll be just we next to him all the time trying to get those tips, man. This guy is, uh, first things first, I was there when he when he bought the team. Uh, Ross Perot Jr. was the owner of the Mavericks at the time, and, and he bought the team from there. And we knew 
Mark Cuban by face. He he, he sat about on our, on our bench side. He sat about six six seats from us and always yelled at the ref. The same way he is now, he was the same way. He yelled at the refs and he didn't even he didn't own the team. He just was a, a sports guy yeah. and uh, really cool. We would see him out about town. Didn't know his name. Didn't know what he did. Didn't know if he had money. If he didn't have money. He, he, if, you know, if you approached the guy, he, you wouldn't even know if he was a billionaire or not. I mean, he's, he's a jean guy, old sneakers, have a T-shirt on. Um, you know, he hates to put on a suit. He does it on Shark Tank because they make them, but uh, <laughs> he doesn't really like to put on suits and, 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 and heel shoes and dress suits. And, and, and when they said the new owner is coming in the locker room, you know, he want to introduce himself. He walked in and myself, Michael Finley, Nash, we all started dying laughing. Like, no way. Like, you cannot believe this this guy. I mean, he's always rooting for us, Aww. but to know that he had enough money and, and, and enough knowledge to get this deal done, we first we were just happy for him, but we knew that we was getting a really cool uh, owner. And then when he started to really ask the players, you know, what they need, what 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 they want in a team, how they want their, act, their owner to act, and this, that, and the other. And, and you know, myself, Nash, uh, Dirk, we always say, man, we want an owner that has our back. I mean, no offense to Ross Bro Jr. and the rest, but we, the, you know, the owner before, big Mr. C, he would always be at the games rooting us on. Uh, you know, we have a bad loss. He'd come in there and like, oh, man, don't worry about picking yourself up. I mean, that's somebody you want to work for. That's somebody you want to ride. You want to ride with. You want to die with. You want to try to win a, win a championship, go the extra mile for it. Uh, and, and that's what he does. I mean, he just he's just a guy who loves sports. Uh, now that he has the opportunity to buy his own team, he wanted to do that. I heard he's looking for uh, to maybe go baseball next. Uh, wow. you, you know, who knows? But it, it's, it's, it's really cool working for him. He has, uh, you know, we just redid the offices, uh, the Mavs office. And you would think that a guy that's of his statue and, 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 and the league and, and the, our team, that everybody would be in these exclusive office, but it's just a bunch of desks everywhere. No cubicles, none. Of, it's just a bunch <laughs> of desks everywhere. Really, yeah. Silicon Valley-ish. Like, like if you was to go into the, one of these rental rental office spaces, yeah. and that's the and that's the Mavs office. He want everything to be relaxed. Everything you, you want to be comfortable. He wants you to not be afraid to walk up to the owner of this organization and say, "Hey, I have a suggestion." Okay, well, let's sit down. Look, I mean, look at this. He always advertises, not only on social media all the time, but he always advertises his email. And when you email him, I mean, I'm talking like a Joe Blow. You email him, and within a day, unless he's on vacation, he emails you back. I, I don't, I mean, it's 30 teams in the league. I don't know if you can get that. And I know most mm -hmm. of the owners. I can't get that fast response from anybody. And these are just fans and people around about town that just hit him up real quick and, Sure enough, he'd be like, oh, that's a pretty good suggestion. Thanks for, you know, and have a little conversation with him. So really cool guy. He's down to earth, uh, uh, just, a, just a big fan and uh, uh, loves his sport, loves his team, and, and, and is eager to, to try to help anybody. And, and like you said, Court, I'm trying to get some stock ticks from the brother too, man. <laughs> for real. <laughs> hey, that's crazy because I'm, as we speak, I'm behind on all the Cherry Cherry's World's podcast emails right now. He's and Mark Cuban's responding in 24 hours. Yeah. What's my excuse? Come on, Court, step it up, B. Hey, really. I'll help Court. I help too. <laughs> A natural detox can improve everybody's overall health. If you are suffering from obesity, high blood pressure, lupus, diabetes, fibromyalgia, diverticulitis, or if you need to improve your heart health, a natural detoxification can help you. Are you interested in some anti-aging or some Alzheimer's prevention? Hit us up at www.teamcherryj.com. This is Cherry's World. Hey, so I want to like, you know, I've been a, a big fan of yours. Like before I knew any of this, like I had, I'm, I'm always amazed by the people that she knows and stuff. So like, this is just an honor to meet you, you know, first of all, just to even say that for real. So the one thing, uh, you, you, you were in the slam dunk contest and did, and I never forget what you did. The, uh, the blindfold and, uh, <laughs> the blindfold. Right. Right. That's funny. That's funny that you did this right here. Because that wasn't me. 
That was uh, D. Brown. D. Brown. Let me let me give you a little history on that. Uh, we were both we both came out together, 1990, mm-hmm. and they have a senior classic in Orlando, Florida, and me and D. are in this slam dunk contest with some other people, and every dunk that D. did, including pump his shoes up, I beat him in in the senior classic. Dang. So the way the NBA works, if you're not playing. You don't get to participate in the three point and in the, in the dunk contest and all that other stuff. So he went to Boston and Boston was trash then. I went to Phoenix and we, and, you know, we made the playoffs and, and we were a positive team. So I didn't get to play. He, you know, he's a lottery pick. He got to play all the time. So he got to be in the dunk contest and I didn't. So I'm sitting at home going, wow, they got my money. They got my endorsements right there. He just taking every, every <laughs> dunk that I did to him, he took it. But he got on the bigger stage. Now, I'm not sitting here in the boast and, and bragging and, and try to down what he did. He did an unbelievable job. But I'm like, okay, I got to go back to the lab. I got to get my game up where I get some minutes on the court. So I can, because I know he's going to try to defend his championship next year. I got to come with something different. And it just so happens that uh, Magic had retired and, and we're playing the Lakers and he was working out because he got voted to start in the All Star game. And right. you know, Magic was like, yo, Sam, what's up, man? D came with you. You're going to have to bring him. You know, you're going to have to go all the way blind on him, baby. It's all fun. <laughs> blind on him. So I went back to Phoenix, started working on it, started working on it. It wasn't It wasn't looking real positive. Trust me. It was looking real bad. I think I made like two and a half of them, you know, out of about 3,000 attempts. It wasn't looking real good. So so to be honest with you, we were we were thinking about doing some. We, we, we talked to the NBA about it, and we, we were going to do a blooper. You know, we were going to do a blooper of this dunk. So if I had got eliminated, they were going to allow me to do this dunk. And I was supposed to miss and fall and, and pretend like I hurt myself. And the mascots were supposed to run out with the stretcher. And they pick up the basketball instead of picking me up. And then uh. they run off with the basketball. And it's supposed to be like that. But if you watch the video, after I made the dunk, I'm holding on to the backboard like, uh, this wasn't part of the program. You know what I'm saying? I hold on and go, there, there go God working again. And, you know, and even to this day, it's been 25, 30 years later, you know, like you said, people still talking about the stuff. So, it, you know, it, it, an opportunity presented himself and, and I, I let go and let God and he took care of everything else. Now I'm from Chicago and I kid you not, it was about three or four months ago, I was just, me and my buddy, we argued. All, I'm, I'm going to shout him out. My boy Boo, he was signed to Young Money with Lil Wayne, and we argued all the time about basketball. And I said, if Cesar Sabalas would have played in the NBA Finals, I mean, they only, the, the Bulls only won, they, they won in game six by Paxson's shot. So you can't tell me that the game was going to go to a game, it wasn't going to go to a game seven. If Cesar Sabalas would have played, he laughed me off, said, you crazy. Cesar Sabalas wasn't going to do nothing with Jordan Pippen. If, if the Phoenix Suns went six games and Paxson had to hit a game winner for, it to, for, it to, for them to win in six, you telling me Cesar Sabalas wouldn't at least took it to seven? Yeah. Well, uh, Michael Jordan, let, let's not discredit Mr. Michael Jordan. Averaging 45 in that tournament, unbelievable. Yeah. Still sets a record, but if you if you check my police record against Scottie Pippen, I'm I'm averaging like thirty and twelve I, against. I tried, I tried to tell you. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know how Superman would have would have went to fifty points or or more than he did. But I I, I give Scottie problems. I, you know, and Dirk retired. Dirk Nowitzki retired uh, this uh, this this season. And Scotty came out uh, to, 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 you know, surprise him. And we yeah. start talking about that in the back because Charles was back there, Larry Bird, Sean Kemp, Detlef Shrimp. We was all back talking in the back talking. And I was like, Scotty, I, I, I know you got that ring, but, you know what I'm saying, I, I used to give you numbers. Like, no matter who I played or who I was playing for, you know, my numbers was nice against you because Scotty was a great defender on the ball, and I never went one-on-one. I just caught the ball and finished. I was just a, a mover, a slasher, slasher, and a finisher. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know if we'd have won because of Michael Jeffrey Jordan, but I know it would have been a, maybe a different outcome if I'd have been on that court. 
Thank you so much for yeah. being here just to answer that, Cedric, because he started asking me a couple months ago after they had this fight, and I was like, I don't I don't know. <laughs> he was like, You don't remember that game? I was like, I don't I don't know. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Hey, so you play with Barkley though, and I I heard that um Catino Mobley said Bar- Barkley played with me. Barkley played with me. Oh my my bad, my bad, because you was there first. You was there first. Right. Hey, you're right. You was there first. He came to your team. That's right. Yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> But you were uh, a couple years younger than Barkley. And I heard Catino Mobley say when he played with Houston with Barkley, I think Barkley's nickname for him was Idiot or Dumbo or something like that. Did, did Barkley ever have a nickname for you? No, no, no. Barkley, uh, you know, he, he he probably did that for the young guys and he was on his way out. He didn't he didn't really joke around as much uh, with the youngsters because he, he really wanted to win. He, I mean, when he was in Houston with Catino, uh, you know, that's Scottie Pippen himself, you know, Eddie Johnson, the Akeem Olajuwon. That's an unbelievable squad. So I think he was just giving the youngsters a, a little hard time on, on that situation. But nah, no nicknames for me. He did take me out his, uh, in training camp, like totally illegal foul, flagrant foul, took me out the air after I was trying to dunk on him. You know, the whole team jumped on him. But other than that, uh, you know. You know, after me getting up and getting in his face, he was like, oh, man, I kind of respect you for that. Like, you know, why why would he do that to his teammate? Why would he do that? He, he was trying to, you know, he said he was trying to test his team, you know, to <laughs> see what kind of what kind of team it was. Was he, was was that was we going to let him just walk over us because of he's outrageous and he's big, bad Barkley and, and whatever he says goes. And, and he knew he wasn't going to be able to win with that with a squad that was just going to allow him to do that to a teammate. And his and the other teammates not step up and be like, man, you wrong for that or get in his face. So I, I think that's what he was trying to do. Uh, and 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 I don't know, if, you know, why I happened to be that particular person or at that time. But you know, uh, we were playing defense on the other end. I was guarding him. I blocked his dunk. And then on the other end, I tried to dunk on him, and he just took me out. So it, it, it I, I think he was trying to test me. And then after he explained it that way, I think everybody kind of understand exactly what he was trying to do. Jerry, let me tell you how dope that team was. They had Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, Cesar Zabalas, Barkley, Mark West, um, Oliver Miller, yes sir, Danny Ainge. Man, y'all had a squad, man, for real. And my my partner in crime, Richard Dumas. Rich, oh, how could I forget? That boy was bad. <laughs> that boy was bad. That boy had some defense on him too. Man, how could I forget him? Y'all had a squad, man. Hey, do you ever get mad at Barkley? Because y'all not on NBA 2K because Barkley. Yeah, no, we're not really mad at him. It is what it is. They still, you know, uh, you know, with the, the NBA uh, bargaining agreement, collective bargaining agreement, it, it doesn't matter if we were on or not. We still get the same check everybody else does. So, uh, okay, cool, cool. cool. That's right. <laughs> That's when you were playing at the Suns, right? Look, I'm all late yeah. to the conversation, but I'm like, hey, I knew Big O, you know? <laughs> Yeah, 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 man, Terry, I, I got, I got a whole bunch of more stuff to talk to. You sure you don't want to get in here? I mean, go, go ahead. You, you got basketball. I told you, I'm gonna go back to the right. music because you know I was a Cedric Sabalas fan too. But I was like, I like the rapper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it got so you, those. so you a rapper? <laughs> he was. You ain't seen his videos. He got music videos. Uh. I gotta he got songs. Yeah. We're going to play one at the end of the show. Okay. I'm okay. telling you. I'm sending right. a video. We're going to cut yeah. it into the clip and everything. Okay. okay. I, you know, let, let, I don't really try to explain what happened to us, but, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a hood kid. You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, I love music, and, and that's a that's a big dream, you know, yeah. to have an opportunity to to, to – Write, write songs and everybody in the hood kind of raps, but to actually put it on wax and be in the studio and all that, and I was just in awe. I mean, it was the first song that I, I had already had songs before that, but the first song that actually was put out on a record, you know what I'm saying, with myself uh, and Michael Henderson. I don't know if y'all remember Michael St. Henderson, uh, R&B singer. Uh, he had the Wide Receiver song and yeah. Close to You and all that. Yeah, so I had a song with him. Uh, a local song that I did with Phoenix, so that was unbelievable. And then when I went to L.A., 
I got to team up with Warren G, a kid that I knew, you know what I'm saying, growing up and, and was a big fan of, which was which was sweet. And that was for charity with the basketball best uh, kept secret. So myself, Shaq, Gary Payton, uh, my boy Chris Mills, Jason Kidd, uh, Brian, Brian Shaw, Isaiah Ryder, man, on and on and on. Dana Barrows, we all got on this album to try to, you know, to help our own selective charities. And killed and it. I, I loved it. Like, you I think I'm it. joking when I say the rapper, like, I had a Toyota Camry, the XLD with the gold <laughs> package. You know what I'm saying? I had my CD player popping and Cedric Sabalas was in my CD player. And I was rolling the shop. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I was bumping, you know what I mean? It's crazy. I mean, for for a West Coast kid to get the regulator on a track, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And, and 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 let's not get it twisted. Everybody, everybody on that album besides Dana Barrows and myself wrote had somebody else write for him. I wrote my whole song, my hook. I wrote Warren's parts. Warren supplied the track. And so you know that that's what made me proud. I got to record it in the Hick Factory. That Michael Jackson and Biggie and everybody and you know all the famous people, yeah. you know they all recorded in the Hit Factory. So it, it you know it was just an honor to me. You know I got to sign the wall. I don't know if it's still up there or not, but you know not too many people could say they got down in the Hit Factory and and you know with everything going on. And when, then when we took the after we recorded it and we brought it back to Los Angeles to mix it down. MJ was in the next studio going, oh, that's that's kind of funky. So I was See? like, oh, shit. Oh, I don't know if I was supposed to. <laughs> yeah, like, you could cuss me good. That's how it was. <laughs> that's how it was. Like, oh, Michael said I had a cool little song. I was like, no. It might it, it might have went it might have went double cardboard. You know what I'm saying? Some people no. cycled it, but it's it's all good. You know, a, a dream is fulfilled. So <laughs> it's major and unforgettable to me. Like when somebody yeah. says, I mean, I know you play basketball and everything, and that's cool. But when somebody says Cedric Savalas, I'm like. Yeah, you know how music takes you back to a good time and a good place yes. in your life? Yes. That takes me yes. back to a good time and a good place, and all I can do is smile. Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's and, and, and I like I said, you all know how I love music, and that's how I feel all the time. When I hear music, it just, it just marks the sign of time. Like, I know exactly where I was, and, and, and I can taste the, 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 the Kool-Aid on my lips or, or drinking water, water out the fountain in the uh, front yard and all yeah. that stuff. When you hear music, it's just it's wonderful what it does to you. Out the water holes. Okay, you you can go back to basketball now. I'm I'm gonna go back to basketball too, but at the end, you know what I'm saying? I but you know what? But before I go back to the basketball, Cherry is talking about how big of a fan uh, she is of your work. Were you a fan of Cherry? Oh yeah, without, without a doubt. I mean, I don't want to take her back to Funky Brewster days, but. <laughs> It, it, it is what it is, and then and then and then just continue to go on. And I just, you know, I just love her story on how you know you just overcome so much, you know, because your industry is crazy. I, I mean, I, I dabbled a little bit. You know, you might see me in Living Single and James Fox, and I, you know, I, I should have got, I should, I should have got an Oscar in Space Jam. I mean, I, I mean, I killed it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know about Bugs Bunny in there, but I kind of killed it in Space Jam. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody could have played me. Like me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm, okay. you know, I'm just gonna throw that out there to the to the academy. You know, give me my eyes. <laughs> right. And Courtney, <laughs> that's how I know these guys, okay? Because we were on the Warner Brothers lot, and they were working on Space Jam, and I was doing Family Matters, and then Sed did <laughs> Living Single, and yeah. I was on Family Matters. So that's how I met Big O, Marcus Canby, Cedric Sabalas. Yeah. I caught a little glimpse of uh, Jordan. You know what I'm saying? But that's how all these guys gave me a time of day. I, I was like 12, but I was in awe, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then Cedric and I, went to Ventura and I College. Have skills, but like I said, your industry, it really doesn't, sometimes it doesn't matter if you have skills, it's just right place, right time. And then uh, the opportunities, for the, the connections, because uh, like, you know, my man John Singleton, rest in peace, mm-hmm. I, I've always, you know, came in and read for him. And he's like, said, you the bomb, man, but you too tall. I don't have no co-stars uh. <laughs> that are your size. And and to be honest with me and tell me that, you know what I'm saying, instead of be like, oh, man, you're great. We'll call you. And then I'm, my mind is just going playing tricks. And that's why I'm saying, that's why I'm so, you know, I, I really praise and honor how you continue to you know stay in the industry because it's, you know, you don't get that honesty sometimes. It just so happens I've been, I was getting it from somebody I knew right. who grew up in the same hood that I grew up in. And he, he, he was a successful 
uh, a film filmmaker, and he would just break it down to me like, you know, you know, you look around, man, all these stars, they're they're, they're two foot two. Like they're two for two. And I have yeah. issues getting jobs sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Hart, I didn't get a job because of Kevin Hart, and I told Kevin, get on the damn Apple box and let your girl work. But <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he didn't think it was too funny. But yeah, I'm a, I'm tall for a girl, and I'm only like five seven. Yeah. So. But that's, I don't. Get that's, 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 that's considered tall in the industry. Yeah. Yeah, because these dudes yeah. is like five five. Yeah, so, like, you know, like like she said, Kevin and and, and Tom Cruise. I mean, them, you you them dudes is bitches, man. I mean, you know, no <laughs> part of it, you know. I don't know if I'm supposed to use that word. It's not politically right. correct, but them cats are small, and you just be like, God, yeah, like standing next to me trying to shoot a shot. It'd be like I'm I'm up here, and Kevin's right here. Like I even got a, a, a Instagram a uh, little post when we were at Kobe's uh, retirement of Kevin, and I'm like goofing around with him. Like where Kevin, where you at? And he's like, bring the camera down. And it's like, and that's just that's the the industry part of it, man. Yeah. But, yeah. And women are not supposed to be bigger than men. But you heard Cedric Sabalas say, and I have to use both of his names, Cedric Sabalas, that he kind of likes the acting thing. I've been trying for years, and I just want to get you on record saying, they give me some money, they give me the opportunity, said I can get you to co-star with me, right? Because I don't mind standing on the couch or being on some Apple boxes <laughs> to get in the same shot with you. No problem. I'm with it. I'm with it. You heard it here first. Hey, said, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. I don't feel sorry for you at all for being six foot eight. If you can't, <laughs> hey, I want to be, I wish I was six foot eight. So, hey, I don't feel sorry for you for being six foot eight, bro. <laughs> no problem, bro. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, though. So since we're talking about L.A., so you you got traded to the Lakers or you actually was went there as a free agent? I forget. Yeah, I got traded to the Lakers. I got traded to the Lakers for uh, a draft pick, uh, which ended up being Michael Finley. And oh. uh, we ended up being teammates together in Dallas. And, and we work yeah. on the same staff now with the Mavericks, too, as well. I did this camp one time. You know, I'm from Chicago, so I did this camp. Yes, sir. A couple yes, years sir. ago. So, um, uh, Maywood. Maywood in the Maywood. House. There you go. Yeah. Um, so when you got to LA, uh, then all of a sudden magic comes out of retirement, right? Mm-hmm. So what was that like? Just like, all of a sudden magic comes out. Cause they, they moved him to what power forward or small forward and you were the small forward. No, he never, he, he was point guard or power forward. Uh, oh, okay. you know what I'm saying? He never really took away none of my minutes or nothing like that. You know, it, it like I played with a big guy. You know, first coming into the league, I played with Kevin Johnson, Tom Chambers. They're pretty good all stars, you know. You know, get a little fame, you know, when they when we go on the road trips, a little that and the other. And then Charles Barkley comes, and then it gets real crazy, you know. Uh, but he's a little outrageous at times. So you know, his his particular fan base is you know a booer, you know, because you know he always says you know people come to see me. They come to boo me or they come to cheer me, but they're going to come to see me. And that's it's just the fact of the matter is, and he rolled with that, just like you see him now on television. People, you know, they, they wait to, to hear him say something outrageous or crazy, you know? And, they, you know, so that was cool. But then when Magic came back, oh, my God. I mean, when they say rolling with the Beatles, it's, oh, my God. I mean, everywhere we went, you know, just crazy. Let's, let's, let's back it up a little bit. When I got to the Lakers, it's, it's the only organization that I know I have been part of that where it's only one place we got booed when we ran out the tunnel, and that was Boston Garden. Everywhere else, it was cheer. I, I was like, what is going – like, we are in Golden State right now. Why is everybody – we are in Minnesota right now. We are in Utah. Like, why is everybody cheering? Like, that's how big that organization was, you know, and, and Magic was a big part of that. So when he came back, oh, my God. It, it, it just was madness, man. And you just, you try to take a, as little bit as you can from them. You just, you know, you creeping around the corner. Like, a, like, is he talking a big deal right now? Like what, what kind of power <laughs> moves is he making? You know what I'm saying? You see his worth ethic, you see uh, his concentration, his focus. You try to absorb all that in. Cause we didn't know how long he was going to try to play. And uh, you just try to take bits and pieces from the greatness and, and hopefully a little bit of it wears out on you. But as far as star power, man, that, you know, and even to this day, he, he he went on record for saying that Kobe was the biggest Laker ever. And I I, I I stopped that. I mean, I played with Kobe. Kobe's unbelievable. But if if these two individuals walked into a room, the place would go crazy for Magic. I mean, just the dude is just, 
Yeah. I mean, he just he just a, he's a, he's a, a ball of fun. He smiles all the time. He helps so many people out. Uh, you know, he, he, you know, even though if he had any bad inclination of the guy, he, he makes you feel so good about yourself that you, you know you forget about it. Uh, he executive produced just, my first movie. Yeah, I mean, he's I mean he's magic. I mean, now they named that kid right when he was in Lansing. Magic. I mean, he's just even to this day he's just. He's just so magical, and and you know, so I, I in my book, Magic is the ultimate Laker, and, and probably will always be for the rest of his, Aww, rest of his life. That is really sweet. Now I have to say, you talk about somebody who does the work and has stayed out of trouble. I'm really proud of you. I kind of grew up with a lot of you guys. You have kept yeah. your nose clean. We don't hear about any problems with you. There's never been any groupie. Uh, stories or anything floating around about Mr. Sabalas, and you still do these children's camps. Right. Being a mentor to all these young boys or young men, what are you putting in their ear that is keeping all your kids out of trouble? Well, first things first, I, I, I'm a real advocate of sports because th- there's not a, a job in this world that, that, that you're going to work by yourself. So a team environment can help you out so much. So whether that's, you know, Taekwondo or swimming or, or basketball or baseball, what have you, it's always a team thing that you have to uh, work together. So that makes it easier when you get older and you have to work in the workplace that you can work with others. You know, I love the fact that, you know, you get all different kinds of coaches. You get ones that yell, you get ones that are emotional, you get ones that are encouraging because you may get that and encounter that in the workplace. Now, I don't want to touch on this subject, but, you know, all this craziness that's going on with these mass shootings and all this other. I wonder if these individuals were sports players because it teaches you to deal with adversity, calm yourself down and, 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 and calm down and bring it down a notch to, to where these tragedies will probably not happen. And, and I continue to work with kids because, you know, I was taught that whatever was given to you, you have to also give it back. And, I, you know, I. Don't get me wrong. I, I was not the all-American everything. My story, if you really get deep down into it, you know, I'm writing a book and, and also doing a documentary on it now. I, I wasn't, I didn't play in high school. I, I got varsity my last year. I sat the bench until somebody got hurt the last six games. And then, you know, again, I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then God just cracked. The door was always cracked for God to come in and do something great for me. In the last six games, I'm averaging 20, 25 and 12 rebounds, and everybody's like, where does this kid come from? No scholarships offered, none of that. Just went to school on my own dime. Got an opportunity, you know, to, to switch to switch from working at Taco Bell to get a job <laughs> on campus. And, you know, one thing led to another. And now, all of a sudden, you know, it's just, it's just an overwhelming thing. But it's about, and I teach this all the time, it's about being able to communicate and work with others and then never never doubting your abilities because you might be a very talented person on a on a on a, a stacked team you know what i'm saying you might be a very talented person on the stacked team and it's just not your time yet so that don't mean just throw it away you know what i'm saying if you're the last guy on the bench like ah, i don't want to play this game no more or 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 i never get any lead roles ah, i don't want to act no more or i'm always the opener if i'm a comedian I never get to close the show. Eh, I'm not going to be a comedian anymore. No, just the people that are in front of you, they may be, they may be in a better situation than you right then, but just keep striving. And then you, you might get yourself there. You know, you might put yourself in a position where, you know, something happens it just so happened to me. Every time I, I was doing what I was supposed to be, somebody got hurt in high school, somebody got hurt and I got to play in junior college. Somebody got hurt. The best players. And I got to play when I got to the pros, somebody got hurt and I got to play. So it's, it's just a, just being prepared uh, and, and not, not letting your mental get you in a place where you want to give up or quit. Amazing. I, I love you because I look on social media and I go to write and said something stupid because I never have anything important to say. And he's, <laughs> he's giving away bicycles, you know, uh, to yeah. a whole bunch of children. Yeah. Like you're yeah. always That's on so- the move, always doing something. And it's always about kids. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a like I'm a I'm a South Central kid, and my foundation, the Central Falls Foundation, is just about that. You know, I think that we encourage me. Now, don't get me wrong; I do a lot for adults too. Like we we have homeless block parties, um, and and what that is is, you know, we 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 can go over we I can go over you guys' house and 
go in the backyard, and cook up, and play some music and dance a little bit. But you know, as much as everybody helps the homeless with clothes and, and hands them a bag, that experience of a backyard boogie is not really existed because they don't really have the whole world is kind of their backyard. Yeah. So I bring entertainers, I bring music, I DJ, I, I, I bring the grills, I bring the fryers, I cook it right there in front of them. I hand it out. We hand out over four or five hundred meals, and you know we're doing the cha cha slide and the cupid slough shuffle, and 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 there and it's just for three four hours that their mind can leave their homelessness and and just become normal. You know what I'm saying? For three or four hours, and uh, you know we give away clothes and all that. That's great, but I think more importantly, it recharges them to go. You know what? Let me work my way back to getting there. And 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 when we feed the homeless, it it goes from you know, people who have just gotten out of jail trying to rehabilitate themselves to doctors that that work every day, nine to five as a doctor, but either a divorce, you know, a divorce or something or alimony mm-hmm. or, or child support has gotten to where they're homeless, but they still go to work every day, but they're living yeah. on the street. So you get you get all kind of different situations, you know, when we take care of the homeless. Uh and that's really tough. And our next project that we've been working on, I don't mean to jump right into it, but we're yeah. talking about my foundation, I'm getting a little hyper, uh, is a Enough Enough program. Uh, we have, uh, you know, you guys heard about the water in Flint, Michigan. And my yeah. guy, Derek Coleman, has been an advocate of that, trying to know it. But it's hitting home for me because I, I went to high school in Compton, and the Compton water is brown, too. So I'm putting my money where my wife is. I, 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 I teamed up to with this cause called... Uh, 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 enough is enough to where we can clean this water up. I, I got an opportunity to uh, to jump with a water program to put, you know, to buy these opportunities uh, for homes because it's 66,000 homes in Compton. And so far it's up to, I think, 13,000 homes that are being affected and, and it's growing. Wow. So I, I'm trying to take care of, you know, like, again, you know, I, I'm used to getting that water out the holes in the front yard on a hot summer day in Compton, yeah. and and the kids can't do that, and 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 they're paying for water, they're paying for this water in Compton. So why not have that water clean? So I'm trying to raise enough, or hopefully enough units, uh, money for, to buy enough units to give them a, a chance to have clean water too, to, to not let it get out of control. Because the water in Flint, I talked to Derek uh, the other day. He said it's still bad. It's still contaminated. And, and it's just it's just moving out, and it's, and it's enough is enough. Like let's let's get clean water. Like if, the, if we can't have anything, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's try to take care of the water and make sure it's clean. Amazing! I love your heart. I don't know where it comes from. It's God given, <laughs> and I just I'm so thankful for it for everybody that you touch. <laughs> um, go ahead, Courtney. Before we gotta let him go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, can can you talk about? Because you because you work with the Mavericks, can you talk about other teams and free agency and stuff now? Yeah, I can. I don't want to get you in trouble like Magic. No, 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 no. This okay. is uh this is an open time that we could talk. For, so it's not like I'm trying to recruit somebody, but I can give you opinions and, and, okay. and what I think. You know, because I, you know, like I said, I'm I'm still an analyst, but I know what I cannot and cannot say. And it's funny when I got the job, they had a uh, a situation with the, uh, the officials. Uh, they were talking about a call or something that was made by the official that wasn't made or this, that, and the other, and asked me to comment on it. And I was like, I, I kind of like $25,000. I don't think I'm going to comment yeah. on that right there. So, <laughs> you know, so it's certain things that I can't say, but especially yeah. when it comes to officiating, uh, especially when it comes to deals that, that have not been made official mm-hmm. yet, but uh, the ones that have been done, yeah, I could talk about it. So go ahead, man. Holla. Okay, well, I'm, I don't want to keep you because I could talk to you for another hour and a half. But all right, <laughs> let me see. Go. No, 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 he's gonna ask me all about you and all about basketball. I'll be like, I don't know. <laughs> all right, I'm, yeah, gonna, go, I'm gonna, gonna try to. Understand. I'm gonna try to. It's, 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 gonna, it's a hoop thing. You wouldn't understand. For real. For real. I, I was good, Cherry, to my junior year. Then everybody grew everybody taller than me, so, so that's why I don't got no love for sport, ah, for you being six, six foot eight. But anyway, what do you think about all the super teams? The way the NBA is set up now, I mean, because because technically, the Phoenix Suns, y'all was damn near a super team, and then even when you were in LA, Nick Van Exel, Eddie Jones, you y'all was like, I mean, it wasn't a super team, but it was a loaded team, you know what I mean? So like, how do you feel about that? I, I 
you know, when I played, that team that you're talking about, that Laker team, was was put together by Dr. Buss and the wonderful Jerry West, the logo. You know, it's not, he's not the logo for no reason. That guy is brilliant when it comes to basketball, and you're seeing what he's doing with the Clippers. Um, myself, Eddie Jones, all-star. Nick Van Exel, all-star. Kobe Bryant, all-star. Uh, Eldon Campbell could have been an all-star. Big Shaq, all-star. Then Derek mm-hmm. Fisher. I mean, I mean, but that was all put together towards re- draft, no, rec- you know, and then convincing Shaquille to come. True. You know what I'm saying? So only really recruiting he had to do was, was, was Shaquille. True. Everybody else was through the draft or trade, through the draft or trade. So we had no control. I love the fact that the super teams are controlled by themselves, that LeBron and, 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 and AD and Chris Paul and everybody is calling everybody say, hey, man, let's do this. You know, Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade and LeBron, they put that super team together. Everybody's like, oh, man, it's a super team. You know, Lakers had that back in the day. Kareem Worthy, Magic, uh, AC Green, Byron Scott, mm-hmm. they all made the all-star team five. Their whole starting five made the all-star team in one year. So Larry Bird had his with the McHales and the Parishes and Dennis Johnson. But the thing, the difference was they had to go. Dennis Johnson was traded to Boston. Uh, Robert Parrish was traded to Boston. You know, uh, you know, James Worthy was picked by the Lakers. Magic was picked by the Lakers. Kareem had, you know, he was unbelievable. So he got his option to go where he wanted to go from Milwaukee. But the players didn't have so so much control. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't be so hard on the players because for years we didn't have that control. You know, mm-hmm. our super team, uh, like you said, with the with the Suns. Marley's through the draft. Uh, Ainge was through a trade. Barkley was through a trade. I was through the draft. Uh, you know, Dumas was through the draft. Oliver Miller was through the draft. Mark West, KJ came to us from trades. They had to come. Only person that had some sort of freedom was Charles, who demanded a trade. And Philadelphia gave him a list of teams that they would trade him to. So he went through the thing like, okay, Phoenix Suns, that would be the best place. But now these guys are getting their own freedom, and that's great. Because yeah. you got to think about it. Those that work in, in the corporate America, you got an opportunity to leave this corporation and go to this corporation. That freedom wasn't allowed to us. Uh, we, we couldn't get up and leave and, 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 and go knock on uh, this corporation's door and say, hey, you guys want my services. That, that wasn't allowed. So as much as, uh, you know, Michael Jordan and Isaiah and Magic, they like, man, I would have never left my team. I would have never joined up with Michael. You know, this thing. They couldn't do that. They couldn't do that. That wasn't allowed. They didn't allow that much freedom. So this this is a more opportunity of freedom. Now you got to remember, we didn't have cell phones then too. So if if Magic called Isaiah and Isaiah wasn't home, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he wasn't home. That was it. <laughs> so now you know I can you know somebody can text LeBron. LeBron can text D Wade. They can Snapchat. They can. Put on Twitter, they can go, you know, they, there's so many other avenues that they could communicate with each other that we didn't have before. You know, when I got in the league, cell phones were just starting out. They were just starting out. So, you know, you got magic in them. That, you know, they weren't in the cell phones. It was like, and then look, even private jets, you know, that's, mm-hmm. the, the money is so large now that they jump on jets just to go hang out with dudes. Yeah. Like Carmelo yeah. just jumped on a jet from New York to L.A. just to work out with Chris Paul and LeBron, just to work out. Like, <laughs> like me as a kid, I got to take the number seven bus <laughs> downtown. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a different era. It's a different opportunity. Uh, the money is much larger. So I'm all for guys getting together and, and, and putting together their own teams and playing who they want to play with. Uh, you know, it just wasn't allowed back then. And this is a, this is a player's time, and I, I love Michael and, and Larry and Magic and Dr. J for all the work that they put in to allow me, you know, this will be my 30th year coming up in the NBA, which is you know more than half my life. You know, that's I, 20. I only spent 20 years without the NBA in my life, and the 30 years has been all NBA. It's because of guys like that who fought for you know you know we want more uh, collective bargain agreement. We want this, just like I said before, you know. You, Courtney, you asked me about uh, am I upset that Barkley won't allow us to be in 2K? Nah, because I get the same check as Michael Jordan. You know, I get the same check as Scotty. I get the same check as LeBron. I get the same check as everybody else because of, because of guys like Magic and Dr. J was like, yo, we all 
share this thing. Yes, I am the bigger superstar than Seth Ballos, you know, being Michael Jordan and Dr. J and Magic, but I want them to reap all the benefits because they all know, and Michael Jordan is a big testament, I can't win or be better without other individuals. This is not an individual sport, you know. You know, hats off to Venus and Serena. They play tennis. Obviously, they have coaches and people who egg them on, but that's just them out there. That's just Tiger out there, you know. Uh, but with basketball, um, Michael can't play one on five and win a championship. He needs he needs four on the individuals and people coming off that bench and a good coaching staff. So the the, the the opportunity for them to reward everybody in the league for being in the league is just great. This 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 is my last question until the next time you come back on. Uh, something trending this week. I don't know if you I know you I know you saw it. The Rich Paul rule. What do you think about that? I haven't got the particulars on the Rich Paul rule. If you could explain it to me right now, I'd give you my honest opinion. But I didn't get all the particulars on it, but I saw it. Cherry, you know who Rich Paul is? Absolutely not. Okay. Rich Paul is uh, LeBron James' uh, agent, right? Agent. And Rich Paul, uh, LeBron actually just met him growing up. And when LeBron signed in the NBA, he brought Rich Paul along and just said, I want. I will sign with this agency if you guys let him be an intern, so he can be an agent eventually. Once his internship was up, LeBron left that agency, and I think it was CAA, and then made Rich Paul his um, agent. And Rich Paul never went to college; doesn't have any degrees or anything. He's not like an that. attorney or anything. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a little piece he's leaving out. Okay, LeBron okay. sent him on a mission. You know, like the Mormons go on their mission. Mm-hmm. You sent them on a mission during that internship. Like, you know, go sit down with the rich, rich, and the super rich to figure out how we can make this thing large. You know, it's not like he just like, okay, you sit back, relax, and not, I'm not going to help right. you out. You figure it out. And then Rich Paul figured it out. He put right. him in, uh, you know, situations where uh, Bill Gates, uh, what's the other trillionaire that's out there that, uh, he put him in situations where he can learn from from some of the richest uh, businessmen in the world. Wow! Yeah, no, I had no clue. I was like, Rich Paul. I don't think he's a designer. <laughs> Close. Well, it's the NCAA. Well, now Rich Paul, of course, has LeBron James, and he has Anthony Davis. He has Ben Simmons, a host of other top notch guys, and Draymond Green. And the NCAA this week or last week just put a new rule in that. Um, I think last year they made the rule where players can go test out uh, the draft, and if they don't make it, they can come back to college. I think that was last year. So this year they said they, you can still do that, but you can't talk to an agent that doesn't have a college degree. So LeBron James heard about that and went straight to Twitter and said, you can't stop, can't stop, won't stop, you're not going to stop this movement, stay woke, uh, hashtag the Rich Paul rule. Because Rich Paul has turned into like the biggest agent in the NBA. So that's what everybody's talking about now. This is the Rich Paul rule. The NC, conspiracy, conspiracy theorists in the NBA says that the NCAA is trying to block Rich Paul from advancing. I just want to know what you thought about that. I got my own opinion on that. I don't think it's necessarily true, but do what you think about that. Yeah, that's uh, nonsense. It, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, you know, and this is how I feel about young young players leaving. If if they're old enough to fight in the war, they're yeah, old enough to yeah. go get a million dollars in basketball. Like, why are you stopping them? From, if they can go work at Taco Bell, you know, they used to have this uh, – no, no offense to Taco Bell. I'm not trying to bash Taco Bell here. But what I'm saying is uh, they should have this, uh, you need a work release or a work permit. Yes, a work something permit. Something that your parents, your parents sign and say it's okay for you to work. Now, what's wrong with that? If you're 14, 15 years old, you get that. And because because they're all, you know, they're all working for these, you know, fast food restaurants. And, and they have young kids working on them, especially during the summer. Mm-hmm. Just because their salary is between 15 and Seventeen dollars an hour. Does that make that any different? That that somebody else's salary is a hundred million or whatever. It, it, you're putting a dollar amount on that, and that's wrong because you can. Like I said, if you're 14, 15 year old, you can go down the street and work at the corner store, 
And it's not a problem. You know, it's the fact that these inner city kids are making all this money and 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 everybody's trying to skip over. Now, there's enough kids. NCA, listen to me. There is enough kids to supply great basketball in the NCAA. There is enough kids out there that will play great basketball that don't that may not go pro their first, second, or third year, but there it will be some decent basketball. I mean, the, the Final Four is bananas, you know, because everybody wants to watch this one and done situation. It's it's the only tournament like that that you like. If you go and if you lose, you go on home, you know. And with the NBA, you got to lose four or five, four times to get out to eliminate it. This is one game. You got, you know, 24 minute, 20, 20 minute half, two 20 minute halves to do what you got to do to advance, to survive in advance. So the, the system that you put together, people are going to watch because it's do or die. But don't try to stop kids from, from either working a fast food restaurant or working in the NBA and getting millions. Whether they're getting 15 an hour or they're getting 15 minute, million. Let them have an opportunity to make their own choice. And regardless if the person has a degree or not, shouldn't really matter. That should be something that an requirement that the NBA, you know, and the, and the NBA does have a requirement. They, they require that their agents be registered. They don't have, right, to, right. have to have a degree to be an agent. They just got to be registered and certified that this person, John Doe, is a, a certified agent and he can uh, negotiate his contract. And, and it's really ridiculous, too, because the NBA contract is the same for everybody. Only thing that differs yeah, is, the, is the years and the dollar amount. That's true. That's true. That's I, true. I, I signed the same sign contract as Michael Jordan, as LeBron James. It hasn't changed. It's the That's same true. contract. Only thing that changes is the years and the numbers. So it's, it's, it's not hard math. It's not like you got to go in there and go, all right, let me look over this. No, take that out. No, no it's all the same contract. Everybody gets the That's same true. contract. Uh-oh, I might be an agent one day telling me that. Baby, I need to start yeah. learning on my basketball. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Before we let you go, said, like, I might have to become a Mavericks fan. You know what I'm saying? Tell me what's going to happen in this next season. What do we have yeah, to look forward to? Please become a Maverick fan. I mean, first things first, we got to salute the great German, Dirk Nowitzki, going out like he's supposed to. I mean, doing what he did. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, probably, you know, he's one of the top, if not the top five uh, uh, players in his position, without a doubt. And obviously, I think that um, it's, it's a tough struggle between Akeem Olajuwon, Tim Duncan, uh, and Dirk for, you know, uh, being a guy who wasn't born in the United States and being the best player to ever, uh, you know, be. Uh, obviously, Tim Duncan with five championships exceeds that and then and Olajuwon with uh his MVPs and his two championships uh kind of but as far as you know changing the game look at Kevin Durant and LeBron they're all doing you know not only were they doing the dream shake but they're doing the dirt the dirt fade the kick fade he's 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 changed the game he stretched this game out and he also to all you young players that may be watching this he also changed the way that you you're supposed to conduct yourself uh, uh with the you know he, I, I, I was with Dallas when he came in. There's no posses. It's no, you know, this guy, this guy got a hang, no hang on. He practiced three times a day, whether we had a game or not. No complaints, extra workouts, on and on and on. I can go on with all the stuff that he signed. You know, uh, he's hurting. He's exhausted. He sits down, signs autographs for hours for people who mail stuff in. Wow. I mean, his, his, his foundation unbelievable so he set the precedent for a lot of things for guys to, to, and that's when the, the, the shift changed like okay this is what i'm going to do and, and and i heard Raja bell talk about this in his interview about you know these players that are good uh like like expressions carmelo was going through it and alan iverson went through it but they have an opportunity to have a young player like dirt when he's 18 19 years old to lead that franchise for 20 years do, do you do you pass up on that or do you try to get something short with a Carmelo and an Allen Iverson? You can't do that. They, they This is a business. You got to remember that. So that longevity of a Dirk, longevity of a Tim Duncan, you got to go. You got to go with that. And and these these high ranked players that are coming up late in their years, they got to understand that. 
And they got to come into a program. Roger, I said it. They got to come into a program knowing, like, hey, you can't fight Dirk for minutes. You can't fight Tim Duncan for minutes. You can compete with him, but you can't bitch and complain when you're not playing. We want this kid to play because he's going to give us 20 years. You're going to give us maybe two seasons. Yes, you may win a championship, but 20 years of what Dirk has done is just a model citizen, uh, you know, clean nose, uh, do, does any and everything that he, the organization was asking to do. And, and, and as far as a business standpoint, they want to go for that. Uh, so that's my ploy on Dirk. But we got a young kid that just replaced him named Luka Doncic. Luka. Unbelievable. He, I mean, he, he's got that old man game in court. You know what I'm talking about? He got an old man game to him. He got an old man swag to him. Uh, he's very young, just turned 19. He started when he was 18. Uh, and then we got another uh, a big guy that was in New York. Things didn't work out for him in New York. And Christoph Porzingis. Uh, I know you guys remember Jalen Brunson, two-time national champion for the Villanova Wildcats. You know, he's coming back next year. So, you know, it, it's the West is really tough. Zion and, 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 and what uh, Paul George and, and the move by Houston. Uh, uh, also, Kawhi coming to the Clippers. It's going to be very difficult. Sacramento's up and coming, too, as well. But, uh, you know, we got we got three guys of our own that are pretty, pretty decent and, and, and going to shake some things up. You know, uh, Luca was rookie of the year this year and he's just going to keep getting better. Uh, knock on wood, no more injuries between any of those guys. And, uh, you know, Mark, Mark Cuban is really slowly, slowly putting himself back in the position to try to win another challenge. Y'all yeah, going to be tough. Okay. Tough, tough. So I'm going to watch basketball all season, Courtney, and we're going to like keep up and I'm going to be wearing Maverick shirts and stuff. Okay. That's right. Cedric has sold me. I'll be a magic fan. (laughs) Thank you so much for coming and visiting Cherry's World and letting us keep you up late. We've had you on here forever. It is like a living legend has really graced Cherry's World. (laughs) (laughs) You, no problem. Hey, Shottown, appreciate you hanging out with me, man. Great questions too, bro. Man, I, I got like 30 more, but I'll save them. <laughs> Hopefully we can get Cedric back. You know what I'm saying? After the season, I can teach him all that I learned about basketball. And, then, <laughs> and he'll let us know what else he's got going on next year because there's always something new with him, and I love that. You just keep gotta moving. Keep got to We got to save this water first. Right now, most importantly, I'm just trying to save this water. Save this don't water. Go, don't, download the app, the quick app. G, that's right. Quick guy. G W I C K. G W I C K. It's at your app store, Apple Store, or whatever you get it. Go get it, and, and it's it's a fun opportunity for you to uh, save those cards that's been in the drawer, and also add some fun to it, some personal stuff to it. Instead of going to try to find a card and they be like, where did I get this from? You know, you, you can put some personality on it. That's right. We're gonna put everything up, but Cherry's World is gonna end with a Cedric Sabala song. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Cedric. All right, guys, take it easy. I really appreciate Thank you. I bring the pain down the lane, and I'm coming with charge. All the dames love my name, and my entourage. We will motion, feel the glide. All my homies got them open. Every ride, pull them over to the side. And I advise them to feel the side. Feel the ice, like a thrill of ice, and they chill for real when they feel the slice across their neck. This boss in force with more than threats. Hit the running corvette, you want war, I'm your bet. Call off all your bets.
Play your position and respect the rules. I catch you slipping. I'ma check you, fool. Now nah, I ain't tripping. Making baller moves the best. And that could be no better. Stay fresh, vest under my machine, no sweater. 20 inch TV, showing her bikini. Laughing. And my stress, Lamborghini, you can't be me. Enough said. Called your buff and smacked off your head. My cup running over. Plus, I'm well fed. And in the Range Rover, ladies wanna give me legs. Every letter, C ever spoke. Sounds like C notes. Gets pounds of cheddar. Whenever I quote, clever words that I wrote. So don't forget who spoke. You got to handle your business. You never been so business. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. You got to handle your business. You never been so business. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. Handle you. You got to handle your business. You never been so business. Handle you. is Cherry's World. Hey, if you want to continue to support Cherry's World, Cherry's World podcast, shop Urban Intellectuals. Shop Urban Intellectuals under Cherry J75. It helps keeps this podcast up for the magic word free. So if you're a supporter of Cherry Johnson and the Cherry World podcast, shop Urban Intellectuals. Shop urbanintellectuals.com slash AFF slash Cherry J75. That's urbanintellectuals.com slash AFF Cherry J75. Courtney, are you happy? Yes. Are you happy? That was dope. (laughs) That was dope for real. I mean, like, man. man, that's like, Going back, man, you know, talking about the Phoenix Sun. Uh, like, that team, You, I don't know how you don't remember this team. Like, geez, I mean, I, mean, I remember team. the guys that were on the team because I remember, like, when they came to L.A. and we went to the club. But I don't remember, like, the game. That team was so good. Like, like people really feared that team because it wasn't a team built like that. They were a good team without Barkley. And then you add Barkley to it, and like he said, it just... I mean, they really could have beat the Bulls. They really could have beat them. If they were all the way healthy, they really could have beat the Bulls. And I sound crazy because I'm from Chicago saying that, but it's the truth. They really could have beat the Bulls that year. That and, like, I'm so, and I'm so glad he said what he said, that he gave it to Scotty because we actually talked to Scotty. Um, he, my boy actually talked because he uh, sponsors a store. So he actually talked to him more, but I was happy, happy to be on the FaceTime when he said it. Like Scotty was talking crazy. He was like, "Man, Michael Jordan ain't never won nothing without like he was he was on. I probably can't. Uh, yeah, he was talking crazy. Yeah. Now see, I do know about some Michael Jordan and some Scotty, but no offense about said, you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's kind of different when you know people. Yeah, you can watch him and be like, oh, that's my boy. But then, like, I didn't know no Pippen. I didn't know no Jordan. You know, like, I always yeah. used to say Boston was my team because I like Paul Pierce. That was that was a story in itself. I had these shoes, right? And it was ugly. They was green and yellow. But what nobody else going to rock them. I and the only thing I could find to fit with it was a Boston jacket, right? So I was like, I was in a club one night. And we was at the bar. And some dude walked up and he said, "Ah, oh, you like the Celtics? And I looked at him and I said, nah, I like Paul Pierce. And he looked at me, laughed, and walked away. My homegirl was like, hey, asshole, that's Paul Pierce. I was like, what? What? You didn't know. That's <laughs> no, how you didn't know that? And you, how could you say that you know, and you didn't know that was him? Okay, so look, Paul Pierce and Cherry Johnson had something in common. We both were a headband, right? He was in the club, he didn't have his headband on. How was I supposed to know that was him? So then, when I was... That's a great, 
<laughs> so stupid, right? So then when I was leaving a club, I walked to give my ticket to valet. My dumb ass is clumsy. I walked back up on the curb and smashed right into somebody, right? I turned around, I was like, I'm sorry. And he looked at me, he was like, good night, little mama. And I was like, hi, Paul Pierce. Welcome to Cherry's World.